All right, welcome. In this video, we'll look at how to uh, measure the clock cycle uh, of a uh, code that's executing on the board uh, using Kyle Microvision. So let's uh, use a combination of STM32QMX to create a project, uh, and then we'll go about and measure how long a particular loop takes uh, to do that. So let's launch QMX. So I have my QMX starting window. I'm going to create a project from uh, by selecting a board. So uh, I'm accessing the board selector right here. I have a STM32F7 nuclear board, the F746. So that's what I'm selecting. Double click on it and initialize all peripherals to their default. Let's say no to this. And while it's going to take uh, a few mi uh, seconds to load up. Uh, All right, now we have successfully launched uh, the chip view. Let's go and clear out all of these pins because we, uh, we're we not going to really use uh, much of them uh, on this particular example. So we're going to say pin out. Uh, we're going to say clear pin outs. Yes. Uh, let's go to, we need a way to debug this, uh, which is done through something called a serial wire. Uh, in uh, the case of the STM32. So if you notice when I cleared the pin out, it removed all the other pins. That way we don't have extra junk in our code uh, for what we're trying to do right now. So under A to Z, I'm going to go find, uh, I'm going to find sys. So if when I go to sys, if I click on sys, I can get to this, uh, I see this uh, sys mode configuration pop up. I can also get here, by the way, from categories. And if I go to categories and select so by default, when I select categories, I should get this kind of view. Click on System Core, and from there on Sys. So I'm looking at Sys, and under this, the System Mode, uh, the debug is by default set to Disable. Uh, we want this serial wire, because that's how the uh, uh, nuclear board uh, debug uh, is connected. So now that's all set up. So next thing we want to do is go to Clock Configuration and set the right clock value. Uh, and let's set the maximum possible. It says its clock can be set up to 216 megahertz. So that's what we'll do. Uh, set to 216, just hit enter. It might give you uh, a message saying uh, no solution found. Just say OK. Uh, it'll switch uh, the internal clock to a PLL clock and then uh, be able to set the clock to 216. So now we are kind of done with setting up the uh, system now under the project. Let's go and put in uh, our project name. So let's. I'm just going to call it L2 uh, Clock Cycle Exercise. Uh, so since we're trying to measure the clock cycle exercise, make sure uh, you have MDK ARM version 5 selected. That's a uh, Kyle Microvision 5. That's what we're using. Uh, in this class. And next, uh, under code generator, we want to say copy only the necessary library. And then we also want to say only generate the peripherals, uh, uh, I mean, generate peripheral initialization as separate C and header files so that the main code does not look uh, overcrowded. Uh, okay, so that's what we have. Uh, I, I believe we're done uh, pretty much from here, and we can now hit generate code. Now, once the code uh, is going to take a while to for it to generate the code, when it's done generating, it's going to ask us uh, if we want to uh, open up a project or open up the file or browse the project folder. So let's finish. Uh, let's let it finish doing so. All right. So we're done. Uh, it's asking me uh, whether I should open the folder or open the project. Let's just open the project so that it'll open up Kyle Microvision. So Kyle Microvision is going to open up now. In fact, it just did. So let me pull that window here. So Kyle Microvision has now opened up. Uh, the skeleton code exists. Uh, the main uh, is right here. Uh, so we are now going to edit the main file. Uh, this is generated code. So if there was any mistake we made in the configuration of this code, we can go fix it here and regenerate the code. Uh, the structure is created such a, such a way that when you regenerate the code, it will override everything except for what you had put under user code begin and user code end. So there's a number of sections for user code begin and end. So make sure whatever code you add, it's 
inside these regions. So it could be under code begin one and two, or one, or code begin one, uh, two, or code begin uh, and end while three. Uh, so make sure any code you add, uh, if you want, uh, if you don't want it overridden, when you sometimes go and fix some configuration here, you want to add those uh, there. Okay. So what we'll do next is we're going to add uh, some code. Uh, so let's uh, let's create an array. Uh, so at the very top, under uh, there should be private variables here. So it says user code begin private variable. Okay. All right. We'll start there. So private variables. Awesome. Uh, so. I am going to uh, put down, let's see, let's define uh, some num samples to be 500. So if we're going to look at 500 samples. Let's create an, uh, create an unsigned integer array. Let's call it array 1. And the size of that array is num samples. Uh, uh, let's declare a variable called n, an integer, and another unsigned int, uh, unsigned int 32t. Acc accumulate and uh, set that to uh, b equal to 0. Right? Uh, this uh, particular example, we won't use this, but I'll have you do an exercise where you might uh, use this particular accumulator later on. Okay. Now let's browse down to user code begin to. Okay. There, let's do this. Let's. So we created an empty array here uh, of size 500. Right. Let's just fill in that array. Uh, so what we'll do is just basically create a for loop. Oops. Uh, create a for loop for. Autocomplete is being a little annoying here. Uh, for okay, oh wow, uh, let's let me do this for some reason. The autocomplete just wants to uh, add a function for n equals zero, uh, n less than num samples uh, n plus plus all we want to do is populate the array one that we called uh, with n itself so the first item of the array will be zero the second item will be one and so forth so an array uh, going from zero uh, to 499 all right all right so let's leave it at this let's leave it at this uh, and now what we'll do is let's just build it uh, since we're building for the first time, it's gonna uh, it's gonna basically uh, compile all the files that were brought in from the STM32 CubeMX library into our project folder. And in this the first time around, when you click on this build, it takes longer. For subsequent builds, uh, we don't want to rebuild all. We just want to build whatever uh, it is that we change, so that we're not spending a lot of time waiting for the entire library to be rebuilt. Okay, so that's what we'll do. So we'll let it finish compiling uh, and then come back and uh, uh, add breakpoints and uh, measure how long it takes. All right, now we're done building everything. So next step, what we're going to do is we are going to set up the project uh, and uh, basically debug. Okay, before we uh, do that, let's change the optimization level. So when you compile, you have certain sets of optimization levels. So let's just see what happens if we change the optimization level. So you can click on this target right here. Okay. Uh, and then under debug, make sure it's ST link debugger is set. Uh, click on the C, C++ tab right here. So that's C, C++ tab. That's the optimization level. By default, when QBMX brings in a code, uh, the optimization is set to the best optimization. Uh, let's just let's bring that to the lowest level of optimization. Uh, lowest level of optimization is sometimes helpful if you want to see the generated assembly code. So let's set that to the lowest level. Uh, press OK. Uh, we are going to rebuild the project. So we'll have to rebuild the project because we just set the optimization level right here to uh, basically the, the simplest optimization. So this will take uh, maybe a minute. All right, we are done building. So let's do the following. We're going to go uh, debug next. 
so before we debug, uh, so how do you start the debugger? The debugger is right here. So that's the debug. Let's click on the debug. Uh, we're going to set a breakpoint. Let's let the debugger start first. So when the debugger starts, by the way, I have my board connected uh, right now via USB. Uh, so before you hit debug, you should uh, definitely make sure that's already being done. Uh, let's put a breakpoint right here. So I basically a breakpoint can be added by just clicking on uh, right here on the gray area of the code. Uh, I added a breakpoint there right at the beginning of the for loop. Okay, and then uh, we'll add a breakpoint right here when the for loop is actually done. So what we're trying to see is how long does it take to write uh, a series of values into memory? Okay, so that's where uh, the breakpoint has been put. Okay. All right. So now what we want to observe is this. So the states, the total number of clock cycles spent, uh, that's uh, where that gets reported. So uh, before we do that, let's actually, you know, optimization level allows us to look at certain things a lot more easier. So let's go up here and see here. Uh, looks like uh, n somewhere here was initialized to zero. Uh, okay, uh, you can see the initialization here. It's a lot easier to follow the assembly code uh, when the optimization level is zero. So you might be able to see the uh, actual op uh, assembly code and, and be able to read it. As you increase the optimization code in a complex processor, it becomes harder to correlate directly the C code you wrote with, a, with the assembly that's generated. Okay, that's where the optimization level come in. So let's just uh, let's just start and to, in order to start uh, debugging. So I I have let's recap. So I set a debug pointer here, a debug pointer here. So breakpoints here and here. Uh, I'm going to start running my code. So click on run. So it'll click and run. And what I this yellow cursor came and stopped right here. Make a note of this state. So the the state now I have is two four. 293. So I'm going to keep write that down. 24293. Now let's hit run again. And what it'll do is the next time it'll come and stop right here. So let's do that. All right. So it's done running through the loop. And it's telling me that the now the number of clock cycles spent was 58899. 58899. In other words, it spent a total of this clock value so let me bring out my calculator right here so uh, five eight uh, eight nine nine minus two four two nine three thirty four thousand six hundred six clock cycles to fill in uh, those values that's what it's saying, All right? So it's it. So this is the new count of the state minus the old count of the state that we had initially uh, gives me the total number of clock cycle counts. Okay. So now let's see what happens. That's how you measure the clock count here between two uh, uh, levels. Uh, you can also watch a variable and make sure the array was actually populated. So let's do that. So under C code. If I do array one, right click and say add array to watch one. Oh, I don't want uh, the whole. Uh, let's add so highlight array one without the end part. Right click, add array one to watch one. So here now, I, if I expand it, I can see that array down here. So I can see that array down here right there. So let me right click and say it show me in uh, decimal number instead of hexadecimal. So I see uh, the array was populated. Right? Okay. All right. Uh, let's try this again, except now we're going to get out of the debugger. Let's increase our optimization level. Okay. Let's increase our optimization level. So let's increase our optimization level. We do that by clicking on uh, this wizard right here. Going to the C, C++. Changing our optimization level to what uh, QBMX had set up level three, so highest level of optimization for now. Just say okay, uh, and now we will need to rebuild it. And again, it'll take about close to a minute uh, to re rebuild all the code uh, that was recreated 
Okay, so we'll wait for that. All right, now we're done. Uh, we're done uh, rebuilding it with our optimization level three. So now let's go debug again. So let's debug, same breakpoints as before. It's downloading, it's flashing the, the chip. Uh, uh, let's make sure the array is initialized all to zero. So you see that the array is initialized all to zero right now. Uh, let me hit run. Well, uh, my C code went, it's hidden behind one of these windows. Uh, my C code should be here, but since I pulled this up, it got hidden somewhere. Let's see if I can bring that back, here you go. So my cursor is stuck at the beginning. Uh, at the first part of the breakpoint, it says the number of states was one, four, three, six, three. Okay, that's the new, uh, that's the old number of states. Now hit run again, and that breakpoint will come and end right here on while one. So let's end it right there, while one. And we see that the array was populated right here, right? And it took a total of one, five, four, six, one clock cycles. Okay, so let's do the, let's do the math now. Uh, so before, between the old cycle was 24,293, and the new cycle was 58,899. So we spent a total of 34,000 clock cycles doing uh, just uh, that, uh, add, you know, populating an array. So this time around, with an optimization level set to the highest, uh, let's see, we see 15461 was a new one. And the and when you at the beginning of the loop it was one four three six three, so a total of thousand ninety eight clock cycles. So it's changing the optimization level in the debugger uh, can have a dramatic effect on the number of clock cycles we use, and that's how you measure uh, the performance of code uh, in Kyle Microvision quickly by looking at the states. Okay, so it's basically giving you a measure of the number of clock cycles. Right, so uh, we'll do further today in uh, our class exercises, looking at different memory settings to see how we might be do better.